So after my video when I made this cheap quad, I quickly drew up and 3D printed this little bubble and I installed some FPV equipment on it. I flew at FPV a few times and it was freaking addicting! But the parts were cheap and I had one of the speed controllers fail mid-flight and it had like a thermal meltdown or something, it was actually glowing orange when I found it. So with inspiration from FPV Kebab's comment that I never replied to, and sexy mini quad pictures that I see on Instagram, I decided to actually fork it over and buy some good mini quad parts. At first, I had a crazy idea to make a super rigid frame out of aluminum square tubing. I had my friend TIG weld the aluminum together, and then I drilled a bunch of holes in it. But the frame is still a little bit heavy at 188 grams. At first, I used my APM 2.6 as the flight controller, and that took a whole lot of tuning just to make it fly at all. I just really didn't want to have to buy a frame that somebody else designed, so why not make my own? So I stayed up late that night and designed my own mini quad frame. The arms are designed to stick out beyond the edge of the motors to act like a bumper and protect them. And then just the next day I had my design in my hands, fresh off the 3D printer. The cool thing about 3D printing is that I can rapidly prototype and quickly see in real life what works and what doesn't. And once I like something, I could super easily CNC cut it out of carbon fiber. So after a couple ugly prototypes, I came up with this. It's running Emacs RS2205 2300kV motors spinning 5x4.5 inch props. Flycolor 20 amp ESCs, which are ridiculously light and small, and super snappy and responsive. These are connected to a Luminaire power distribution board and powered off of a 1300 mAh 4S LiPo. The flight controller is an SP Racing F3 edition of the Naze 32. It requires a little bit of soldering and setup, but Painless360 has a great playlist where he covers all about this flight controller and how to set it up. Super helpful. I'll link that down below. For video, I'm using a Runcam Swift 600 TV line FPV camera, which can run off of anywhere between 5 and 17 volts, which is super nice. The camera is powered off of, and feeding video to, an Immersion RC 600 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter. The ESCs and the run cam come from GearBest.com, and they've actually been super cool and provided me with discount codes for all of my viewers. And the SP Racing F3 flight controller came from Banggood.com. All those links are down below. So here's the 3D printed frame in action. Oh. Just like that. Can you have a different jingle? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, not really. Uh, well. <laughs> I love the power. <laughs> to land. <laughs> Once I had a frame I was really happy with, I got a sheet of carbon fiber, and I've been working with the CNC machines at my school all quarter long, doing all sorts of cool projects. However, this was my last chance to use the machines before school shut down for the summer, and I had a lot of troubles. Here's the cam simulation in Fusion 360.
And here's the G-code for all that. This is my instructor's homemade CNC router that I used to drill holes in it. I was going to use this for the whole operation, but it kept having resonance binding problems on the x-axis and the stepper motor would lose its step. This fancy looking Tormac turns out to have a really tiny amount of table travel, like not enough for the mini quad, and this huge machine is limited to only 2000 RPM at the spindle, and with an 8th inch flattened mill is a really slow surface speed, and I broke a couple of tools trying to cut it. So with no time left, I called it quits for now, and I don't have access to the machines anymore. One time, when I was flying the 3D printed frame, I forgot that I had only plugged the battery in halfway for testing, and it unplugged itself in the air with, and everything went black. So that fall broke two of my arms, and I decided to just cut the rest of the carbon fiber out manually with a scroll saw, which kind of sucked and it doled all of my blades. My little brother came to visit me up in Washington State and helped me to transfer everything onto the carbon frame, and it looks freaking awesome! The carbon frame weighs in at 369 grams without the battery. I've never actually owned a real mini quad frame before, and so this has just been my experience designing my own from scratch. And I'm no freestyle FPV pilot yet, so you're just gonna have to wait a little while for some sweet moves. If you do want to see some sweet moves now, go check out FPV Kebab's newest video, it's freaking cool!